Budget laptops for everyday or casual use are abundantly available in the market, but finding one that doesn't sacrifice a lot to fit a low budget can be a tricky affair. Asus is targeting cost-conscious buyers with its recently launched VivoBook 15. The Asus VivoBook 15 is based on AMD's first-generation Ryzen mobile platform and checks most of the main boxes as far as core components go. Before we start, go ahead and subscribe. Also press the bell button to get the latest updates. Without any further delay, let us start. The VivoBook 15 is built to fit a low budget, but you wouldn't think that by looking at it, we think Asus has done a good job with the styling, and even though the body is built mostly of plastic, the brushed metal design on the lid and palm rest area, coupled with the dual tone color scheme, helps this model stand out. The hinges do not allow the lid to be pushed all the way back to 180 degrees, but you can get a wide enough angle for most typing positions. The two hinges hold the lid in place well enough at any angle, although it does wobble easily if you move about. The slim borders on three sides of the display give the VivoBook 15 a modern look, and this also helps shrink the overall footprint of the laptop a bit, compared to most 15.6 inch models. The VivoBook 15 X505Z is fairly slim at 18.9mm in thickness and weighs around 1.6kg, so it's not too bulky to carry around on a daily basis. Despite the slim profile, Asus has fitted full-sized ports on either side. You get two USB 2 and one USB 3, both Type-A. A USB Type-C 3.1 Generation 1 port, HDMI, a headphone and microphone combo port, Gigabit Ethernet and a full-sized SD card slot. The palm rest area is spacious enough for even the largest hands, which is good. There isn't much flex in the keyboard and palm rest area as the entire panel is a single piece of plastic, but the keys themselves felt dull and spongy to us. Key travel is decent, but we needed to really mash certain keys harder than usual for them to register input. As a result, we ended up having quite a few typos when writing this review. There is no backlighting for the keys and no number pad either. The trackpad is spacious and works well with Windows gestures. There are a few vents on the bottom of the laptop and some near the hinge for air circulation. The 15.6 inch display has an anti-glare finish and sports a full HD resolution, which is good to see considering the laptop's price and other specifications. However, the quality of the panel is below average. Viewing angles are quite poor, which means there is only a very narrow range of angles at which the colors and brightness look balanced. Viewing the display at anything beyond this results in warped colors and a hazy image. Whites are also blown out at higher brightness levels, making it difficult to read fine text. In the box, the ASUS VivoBook 15 ships with a couple of manuals and a small square-shaped 45 watt power adapter. The VivoBook 15 runs on AMD's first-generation Ryzen Mobile CPUs. You can choose between a Ryzen 3 2200U and a Ryzen 5 2500U, and we have the Ryzen 5 model on test. This is a multi-threaded quad-core CPU with a base clock speed of 2GHz and the ability to turbo up to 3.6GHz. It also has a Radeon Vega 8 mobile graphics chip built in. The rest of the VivoBook 15's specifications are the same, no matter which CPU you go with. These include 8GB of DDR4 RAM, which is soldered onto the motherboard, and a 1TB mechanical hard drive at 5400 RPM. There is a free RAM slot available which lets you upgrade this model up to 16GB. However, there is no quick release hatch of any kind on the bottom, so you'll have to unscrew the entire base to access the RAM and hard drive. Wireless connectivity includes Wi-Fi 802.11 AC with 2 into 2 Nemo antennas and Bluetooth 4.2. The laptop has a VGA webcam which is quite disappointing as the quality is very poor. Even in a well-lit room, the image looks blurry and grainy. The laptop runs on Windows 10 Home 64-bit and with it you get some pre-installed Asus apps for battery management, audio and video setup and keeping the drivers up to date. The VivoBook 15 is not the speediest laptop and this is mostly due to the hard drive. The 1TB Toshiba hard drive is not very quick and this shows in benchmarks such as CSoft Sandra's file system test. The laptop returned a sequential read bandwidth of 106.4 MB per second, random read bandwidth of 57.1 MB per second and sequential read and write bandwidth of around 83 MB per second. This is not unheard of for laptop drives at this price point, but even a small amount of flash storage would have helped speed things up a lot. The sluggishness is noticeable at times with general Windows 10 usage or when trying to load any app or game. Basic productivity and social apps such as Slack, Twitter, Chrome, etc. run fine, but trying to multitask is not easy as the system gets a bit unresponsive for brief moments every now and then. 
AMD's Ryzen 5 2500U CPU is more or less similar to Intel's Core i5-8250U CPU in most of the synthetic benchmarks we ran. When compared to something like the ASUS ZenBook 13 UX331, which uses that very Intel CPU, we got similar scores of 138 and 149 respectively in CyanBench R15 single-core CPU test. In the same benchmark, the multi-core test seemed to favor the Ryzen 5 2500U, returning a slightly higher score of 629 points compared to 510 for the Core i5-8250U. On the other hand, the OpenGL graphics test saw a dip in frame rate at 37.8 frames per second for the integrated Radeon Vega 8 GPU, compared to 52 frames per second with Intel's UHD Graphics 620 GPU. Coming to other synthetic benchmarks, we got a PC Mark 10 score of 2,615 points and a 3D Mark Firestrike graphics score of 1,504 points with the VivoBook 15. However, in real-world tests such as file compression, 3D rendering, and video encoding, the VivoBook struggled to keep up. Zipping a 3.2 GB folder of assorted files with 7-zip took 7 minutes and 40 seconds, while encoding a 1.36 GB AVI video file to MKV using Handbrake took about 2 minutes and 30 seconds. Gaming is possible to an extent on the VivoBook 15, provided you dial the graphics settings down in heavier titles. In Rise of the Tomb Raider, we got an average frame rate of 14.1 frames per second using the low preset at native resolution. We had to drop the resolution in order to get a more playable frame rate. Doom was unplayable even at 1280 into 720 and the low preset, as we averaged around 17 to 18 frames per second. The narrow borders around the display make all kinds of content quite immersive, but the low quality of the panel prevented us from truly enjoying our media. The average color re reproduction and narrow viewing angles made even lively animated videos look a bit dull. You get ASUS's splendid utility for tweaking color profiles, but it didn't help much. The stereo speakers were also strictly average, they don't get very loud and sound a bit muffled. The 3 cell 42 watt hour battery managed to run for 1 hour and 35 minutes in our Battery Eater Pro benchmark. This is not bad and was in line with our expectations from the given battery capacity. With actual use though, which mostly involved working on Google Docs and some intermittent music and video playback, we managed to squeeze just about 4 to 4 and a half hours of runtime out of a full charge. This is not great as the laptop won't last you even an entire workday on a single charge. That is all for today folks, tell us in the comment section about your point of view. See you soon with another amazing video.